Hi everybody, Dr. Stelflug here. Uh, we're gonna talk about emergence and extubation. This is going to be an awake extubation. So we are currently in the case, general anesthesia, endotracheal uh, uh, anesthesia, and uh, we are seeing that the procedure is about to finish in the next 10, 15 minutes. So we're going to start uh, doing our emergence and finally an awake uh, extubation. So three things I want you to do before you start the emergence process. One is check their twitches. I understand that most providers aren't going to have you check twitches if you give succinylcholine, uh, but if you give any neuromuscular blocker, I do want you to get in the habit of going ahead and checking to make sure your twitches are back. All right, and now when we are checking twitches, we take our twitch monitor, we turn it all the way on to 10, all the way that it can go, and then we are gonna do the train of four. You hold the button of train of four and you watch the twitches. See if you see that a little better here. One, two, three, four, okay. Um, Obviously, we want to make sure that we have a nice bright light on there to uh, see that we're getting there. If we don't get any twitches, either we are still muscular blocked, neuromuscular blocked, or maybe our connections are not on or our battery is dead. Okay, so check your twitches. Uh, if you want to do just a post titanic twitch, hold the 100 megahertz down for a count of five. One, two, three, four, five. And then hit the, hold down the twitch and count how many twitches you have post Titanic. Okay. Uh, or what kind of fade that you do have. If you have a fade, now would be the time to start giving a reversal or thinking about giving a reversal, drawing up your reversal, that kind of thing. So check twitches, number one. Number two, while they're nice and deep in uh, stage three of general anesthesia, I want you to suction them out, okay? Let's get all that saliva that they've built up over the case, get them as nice and dry as we can. It's stimulating, but yes, we do have anesthesia going on, mainly our sevoflurane that's gonna help cover that and they should not be bucking during that process. Um, and the third thing I want you to do is to either put in a bite block or if you needed an oral airway at the beginning of the case for ventilation, remember they wake up the way that they went to sleep. So if you had trouble ventilating them, going to sleep and had an oral airway in, Now's the time to go ahead and put that oral airway back in. If you did not have an oral airway in, put in a bite block. When they wake up, they like to bite. We don't want them to occlude the tube by biting. So you can make an easy bite block by taking some gauze that you'll have in your anesthesia cart. You just roll it on up, take some tape and roll it around. I don't, of course, want patients swallowing this or anything. And what you can do is you can take a piece of tape and just go ahead, tape that to the tube. That way they can bite down on it. And when you pull out the tube, you're taking out the bite block with you. Uh, so that's a process that I like. After we do our three steps, I want you to go ahead, start titrating down on your SIVA fluorine. So if you were at a full MAC of two, Go ahead and cut it down to maybe one. We are going to start increasing our fresh gas flows and switching to 100% oxygen. So we're gonna go from our two liter maintenance fresh gas flow to anywhere six, eight, 10 liters of fresh gas flow, 100% oxygen, just like when we went to sleep. High uh, fresh gas flows, 100% oxygen, okay? We want to fill the FRC with 100% oxygen to allow the patient to have a prolonged apneic experience if they should get that during, um, after extubation. Okay, 
When I started the emergence process, I wanted to get them back breathing. So I've given my reversal and I cut my respiratory rate in half. It was at 12, so I went down to six. And as the end tidal CO2 started to build up, I have now a curare notch forming as the patient is trying to breathe over the uh, ventilator's exhalation. Uh, this is the sign that uh, we can go ahead and put them on spontaneous respirations and see how well they can do themselves. Your preceptors may have a little pressure support thing that they like to do in the process to help with this, uh, but I'm just teaching you very basics here. So now we have the patient breathing themselves, tidal volumes in the 200s, respiratory rate 18. This is where we could start uh, titrating in narcotics if we are about 10 minutes away from extubation. If we're closer than that, we really don't wanna be giving them narcotics at that point. At this point, the surgery is over. We can wake up our patient. I want them following commands. That is one of the most important things that I want to happen in an awake extubation is following commands. So I have taken off the eye tape. Patient is uh, looking at me. Mr. Jones, hey, can you lift up your head? Maybe they can, maybe they can't. Can you open your mouth? Uh, can you squeeze my hand if you're worried about residual uh, neuromuscular blocker, which you shouldn't be because you've given a reversal and you've checked it with the twitch monitor. But these are all following command uh, things that you can do. That shows the level of consciousness is back enough that they are gonna be able to protect their own airway. So uh, he has opened his mouth for us. Um, my Siva fluorine is off, they are breathing on their own. I have the 100% oxygen still going. So they open their mouth really wide. I suction one last time, which may make them cough. A lot of times makes them gag or cough, but I want it dry in there. And then what I'm going to do is, my trick is holding the syringe in my hand so that I can release the pilot all the air in the pilot with my thumb and pull with the other fingers. I have the tape off. So what I want to do is I want to give, go ahead and put them on a little CPAP. I have the APL valve between 10 and 20. I want to breathe with them very deep and quickly to get all the condensation of that tube out of the tube. I don't want any condensation hitting the cords as I go out because that will cause a laryngospasm. And then I want to extubate on exhalation so that way their air is going out and they're pushing any secretions or anything away from the cords, okay? So it takes a little practice, but when they breathe in, decrease, pull out, and there we go. As I take this out, trash can is really nice to have on your side. Have your mask right next to you so you can go ahead. If they're coughing, anything like that, you don't want to have everybody sprayed with uh, saliva or whatever. Um, plus, this is helping me being able to give a little positive pressure if they were to go into a laryngospasm. Um, also shows me that they're breathing on their own, that you know, I can see that I have positive end tidal CO2. Uh, they're following commands. Now's the time I can uh, give some narcotics if I wanted to, if the patient was hurting. If they're not hurting, don't worry about it. It is now time to disconnect monitors and get them over to PACU. Thank you, I hope this was very helpful. Uh, let me know what other videos you'd like to see.